me. He is saying that uh, you did not uh, give him any chance to even understand him and to live with him. You just want to divorce. Huh? I did try, honestly. I did. How did, oh, she did try. She tried just to, uh, um, she called many boys in front of me and uh, she just uh, tried to jealous me and I she did, did everything that. which a, a, a good husband don't like. That was so, in the, an arranged marriage? Yeah. Yes, arranged marriage, but I went to her house. I agreed. Uh, I'm, I'm she agreed. married with her witch. Yeah, that's true. I did marry my witch. I didn't get forced. I didn't get nothing. I tried. I went. I got married. I tried. But what time you used to come at night? It's about 9, 10 ish because I used to do home care. Mm -hmm. And then I used to. Before this council was established, it was quite difficult for women to get an Islamic divorce because normally they used to go to a center, Islamic center, and uh, there is an individual person, Imam, who has to decide. But there was no collective decision. Now, because of this council and other councils, there is a collective decision taken by a panel of the scholars, which is uh, more authoritative and more binding. And this is, uh, this is something which uh, has given a great relief to the woman. This is why you see the number of those people who come to us is, is very great, and 90% of them are women. Partijleider Geert Wilders van de Partij voor de Vrijheid wil de Koran verbieden. Volgens Wilders is de Koran een fascistisch boek dat oproept tot geweld. Hij noemt het heilige boek van moslims het islamitische Mein Kampf. Het gebruik van de Koran in huiselijke kring en in de moskee moet worden bestraft, zegt Wilders in de Volkskrant. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, neighbors, colleagues, guests, um, secret service. <laughs> As for that unfortunate person who made that film called whatever he called it, shame on him that he would insult one-fifth of the world's population, Muslims. Shame on him that he would also insult another one-fifth of the world's population who are Christians. No Christian would ever say something like that about the Quran. And no Muslim would ever say that about the Bible. And no sensible person would say that about a scripture unless he has his own agenda. Shame on him. And even though it took a little bit of time for the judicial agency here to investigate it and determine it, we thank God that they have taken the responsibility to prosecute him. And not that I want to see him prosecuted, but I think at least he deserves a judicial slap on the wrist. Geert Wilders moet eens ouderwets met een riem worden gegezeld. Daarvoor pleit de internationaal omstreden Amerikaanse moslimpredikant Khalid Yassin. Hij haalde gisteren een speech op de Islamitische Universiteit in Rotterdam... fel uit naar de PVV-leider. Yassin zei Wilders stelselmatige beledigingen aan het adres van de islamitische wereld... het liefst op een traditionele manier te willen afstraffen met een gezeling. They've coined a law in America. It's called the, um, it's called the theater law. Okay, so you have freedom of expression. You go inside of a crowded theater and you shout fire, fire, fire. And it causes people to riot and stampede and some people die, right? So they say, uh, that's freedom of expression, but you become uh, responsible for, for, for what you just said that caused the, 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 the death or the, uh, or the injury of other people. Well, so, how far do we go with freedom of expression? This if it's to the... It, law, it's a this, that's a law in America now. Uh, it's called a theater law. So you just cannot go into a theater and shout fire, fire as a joke. No, uh, and you can't just walk up and down the society inciting people. You know, and Mr. Wilders, this is what he's doing. He's playing the incitement card. Uh, because if he didn't play this incitement card, who would be following Mr. Wilders? And the, the thing is, um, uh, is Mr. Wilders an orientalist? No. Uh, is he, um, uh, does he have some special um, discipline study in Islam? No. Does he know something about the Quran where he studied the Arabic language? No. So what's his authority? 
He's just another reactionary. I mean, Mr. Wolves is just, he should just put KKK on his shirt, okay, or, or MMM for that matter, on his shirt and walk up and down and say, I just hate all these dogs and pigs, Muslims or whatever the case might be. But he's a public figure. That's what makes it bad. Now, being young and being Muslim in a world where it seems that Islam and Muslims are being demonized, it's not easy. It seems like everywhere we turn, on the news, in the movies, and every form of media, Muslims are being called terrorists, radicals, extremists, insurgents, fundamentalists, fanatics, and fascists. They make these judgments <coughs> because of your religion. They make these judgments because of your ethnicity. And they make those judgments based upon your color. And you will find out that before 1948, none of these words was ever used regarding Muslims. So what happened in 1948 that these words started to be used for Muslims? Well, it was the criminal occupation of Palestine. And because the Palestinians had enough heart to resist that criminal occupation, they were called terrorists and insurgents. And until today, the criminal state of Israel is not considered to be a terrorist state, although they are still committing terror after 50 years. I think that the people who are bombing, blowing themselves up, doing these acts of uh, uh, sporadic acts of terror or whatever, they still a very minute, small number, small number. I call it retail terror, retail terror, okay? But the West is able to justify wholesale terror on the basis of its own political interests. So I think that's kind of like unfair and I think that's kind of like unbalanced. If we want to talk about terror, global terror, let's talk about the wholesale and the retail. And let's find preventive ways, okay, let's find preventive ways if, uh, just as I take a position uh, to de-radicalize young people, then I think Christians and Europeans should do, do their part to de-radicalize, okay, their countries and their governments. Mm -hmm. Because on the, we're, on the end of their, uh, we're on the end of their terror. I understand how it feels living with an evil stigma that leads to public profiling, prejudice, and causing people in the society to make unfair judgments about you. I understand that because I grew up in a post-slavery America. Every day of my life, I was pushed and provoked to do something extreme, something radical, or something that could be called a justifiable reaction. The first Muslims that were called terrorists, fanatics, extremists, were the Palestinians. That was in 1948. So all the way up until now, so the past 60 years, the words terrorism, fanaticism, insurgency, fundamentalism, extremism, and now they're using the word terrorism and uh, fascism. It's almost inevitably, directly affected in news with Muslims and Islam. That's not an accident. Now, there are people who are political Zionists, although they're not Jewish at all. And this idea of political Zionism expanding in Europe fanning, you understand me, and taking and exploiting, you understand me, the issues between Muslims and non-Muslims and, you know, uh, this whole, even Mr. Wilders, if I didn't know better, I would think that he's very much, I think that he has taken uh, uh, and embraced the idea of modern Zionism. And he's using the platform of modern Zionism to espouse the same concepts about Muslims in the world and the Quran that the Jews cannot afford to say in Israel. You see, the Zionists in Israel are not saying what Gert Wilder says, because this would hurt their chances, okay, uh, at the political table. If they was to demonize Islam and demonize Muslims all over the world, they would an antagonize a greater you know, number than they really want to. But Mr. Wilders can do them a favor and do what? He can go outside of Israel with those same feelings and then he can characterize, okay, 
the way that the Zionists characterize the Palestinians to legitimize their power, Mr. Wilders can characterize Islam in the same way. And this is what's taking place. So if I was a person living in the Netherlands today, I would be very afraid that some people like Mr. Wilders fanning the kinds of uh, hate and spewing the kinds of things that he's saying, that he came into some kind of influence where he could marshal together the kind of support that he's saying that he would like to do and do some of the things that he would like to do. I think that uh, what he would wind up doing, he would create an atmosphere for war, for disintegration, um, for the clashing between uh, uh, ethnic groups, something that, um, that, that Europe, for the most part, and America, for the most part, that's in our history. It's a part of the history. And we have come through it, come a long way. I don't know if anybody has done it, but me, you know, I'm not really an intellectual, but I've read and listened to his stuff. I would really like to talk to Mr. Wilders about what he's talking about, about dominant culture. I mean, what planet is he on? Dominant culture? What, what dominant culture is he talking about? I mean, Europe has moved so much and changed, the boundaries have changed so much and ethnicities and culture and politics have fused so much. What is he talking about, dominant culture? Does he mean Slavic? Does he, does he, does, does he mean Germanic? What, what culture is he talking about? I mean, it's